Hi everyone, welcome to The Pen Habit. I am Matt Armstrong, and I'm glad to have you back for another pen review video. We're going vintage today. Now, before I begin, let me send out a huge thanks to Chris, who sent this pen along to me back in October, I believe it was, and I'm just now getting around to getting the review out for it. Uh, it is an itty little bitty pen. Nice vintage pen. And I'm not kidding you when I say it's it's little itty bitty. So for those of you who are familiar, this is a Pilot Metropolitan, not a huge pen. This is the Waterman 52 and a half V, and you can see them here side by side. So the Waterman 52 and a half V is an, a little tiny pen. Now I will uh, apologize up front to, and say I did not do a ton of historical research on this pen. I can't tell you when it was made. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do the research before I write the blog post. So you can always go over to penhabit.com and check out the blog post there. The link to that will be in the, in the description below. Um, but uh, it is a vintage pen. It's made out of uh, Waterman's very well-known Red Ripple Ebonite. Pen's in fantastic shape. Um, but like I said, tiny little pen. So let's uh, let's start off with the pen's specs so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, so the Waterman 52 and a half V is a minuscule 101.3 millimeters when it is uncapped. When it's capped, it is only 112.5 millimeters. And when it's posted, and this pen pretty much has to be posted, it is a reasonable 142.8. Now, it's reasonable in terms of length once it's posted, which is fantastic. It is very, it is a very slender pen. So if you're someone with smaller hands, uh, this, this would be a great uh, women's pen for women who have smaller hands, because I know a lot of women find the pens that I prefer to like too big and bulky to deal with. Uh, this is a very delicate pen. Um, it feels very similar in width to your standard wood pencil, but without the ridges you get from the hexagonal or octagonal shape. Um, but it is 6.4 millimeters, which is nothing. Right here at the narrowest point of the grip, at the barrel you are looking at 9 millimeters, which is still not a wide grip. So even if you gripped it all the way up here, it's not a wide grip. And on the cap, it's 11 millimeters. And then in terms of weight, it's unsurprisingly, because it's so small, it's also very light. It's eight grams uh, without the cap, add two additional grams with the cap for a total of 10. So you like a light pen, you like a small pen, look yourself up a Waterman 52 and a half V. Now, this pen is in pretty spectacular shape. And again, I, I can't tell you exactly how old it is, but I know that Waterman didn't make this Red Ripple Ebonite forever. Um, so it's, I'd say it's probably, I'm just, I'm, this is just a wild guess here, but I'm saying it's probably from the 30s or 40s. Um, it's in pretty, pretty awesome shape. Lever fill pen here. Got the nice gold band, which I find particularly helpful when you have to post the pen because a lot of pens that require posting, if they're not, if they don't have a metal band, they tend to crack right along the edges there. Uh, the pen does have a couple of holes in the ebonite and there's so there's one here there's one here there's one here so um why they do that uh it's probably to prevent the ink from getting pulled out when you pull the cap off i'm guessing um but it, it can cause the pen to dry out a little bit which i'm not a huge fan of this is a ring top pen so you know i think this pen was generally meant to be put on a necklace you know hung through a chain and put on a necklace Although I don't know why you would do how you could do that with this pen because without being able to post it, I find this pen way too small for me to use. Um, pull it off. It's got a very lovely gold nib with the heart-shaped breather hole, and this is a semi-flex nib, which is uh, I'll show you how that works out here in just a bit. The feed is made out of the same red ripple ebonite. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, nice smooth feed on the bottom. And all in all, it's a lovely little pen. Now, I've got a soft heart or a soft spot in my heart for vintage Watermans in red ripple, even if they're pens that I can't use 
on a regular basis, which this one falls into that category. I love this pen. It writes really well, um, but it's just too small for me to use on any sort of regular basis. I get hand cramps because I find the smaller the pen, the more likely I am to just kind of get a death grip around it. Um, and I have to hold it right on the threads or even above the threads to feel comfortable with this pen. Um, that being said, I just love this Red Ripple Ebonite. I love it on my, my Waterman Ideal Number no. 7, which I've used, you know, a lot since I got it. I like it on this pen quite a bit too. So, uh, as I've mentioned before, because this is a vintage pen, you cannot expect every pen you get will write like this. Um, this is more for entertainment's sake than information's sake, because every vintage pen is going to write differently. Uh, even more so than every modern pen, because likely they've been owned before, they've been used, the nibs have been damaged and or repaired. They may have been, uh, you know, they may have adapted themselves to the hand of the person who wrote with them for 50 years. So just, just know when you're going into vintage pens, what you see here may not be what you see if you bought an identical pen on eBay. So that being said, let us dive in. So the pen today is a Water. I'll try to keep my hand out of the way as much as possible. Waterman's Ideal 52 and one half V. And I think the V stands for vest, I think. Um, although why they call it a vest pen when they have a ring top, I, I don't know. Um, maybe, they, maybe you stuck it in a, a vest pocket or something, but it was still attached to a chain. The nib is a 14 Carrot gold semi flex, and the ink for today is Karandash C A R A N D A C H E. This is the colors of the Earth line, which is has been discontinued, and this is the night. Sky color. If you can find these discontinued Karandash Colors of the Earth inks, I highly recommend them. I like almost all the ones I've used. Uh, I have, uh, I they got discontinued about two months after I got into fountain pens, and the University of Washington bookstore where I bought a lot of my inks initially had the full line. So as soon as I discovered they'd been discontinued, I ran to the bookstore and bought all of the stock they had left. So I've got a few bottles of Grand Canyon, which is probably my favorite brown ever. Uh, I've got two bottles of Night Sky, two bottles of Blue Sky. I've got a bottle of Amazon, a bottle of Saffron, and a bottle of Sunset, which is a nice, lovely pink. Um, the only ones I wasn't able to get a hold of that I really want is Storm. I, that's, which is kind of a dusty purple color, which I really liked. So if you if you happen to be out and find a dusty bottle of this stuff in your, your local bookstore, buy it. They're a little expensive, but they're lovely. The bottles are beautiful, and the inks are spectacular. All right. Our quote for today. Let's see. Which one do I've got? A, I've got a list of them here, so I'm trying to pick which one I want to do. Okay, so in terms of wetness, it's a pretty wet pen, which is, actually it's quite a wet pen, which is obviously exacerbated by the fact that it's a semi-flex nib. Now, since that's probably what most of you are, are the most interested in, let me show you what I mean by a semi-flex. So you can get some really decent line variation out of this pen. It, if you don't use any pressure, it's a very fine line. You can see here. Um, and then some pressure will actually put, will spread the times, times a fair bit. Now, why I say this is a semi-flex as opposed to a flex nib, uh, I'm, I'm comparing this to 
um, my Waterman Ideal number seven, which has a red nib in it, the red nib, which is the medium flex nib. That's a true vintage flex nib. This will flex quite a bit, and you can see there's a fair bit of line variation, but you have to push, you have to put more pressure behind it. It's not as soft an experience. So because of that, I, I, this, this is probably as far as I would ever consider pushing this nib because uh, much, much more than that, and I would spring the nib and ruin it forever, which would be tragic on, on a, a, a nib this lovely. Um, you know, you can see here it goes, you know, you can get some, some pretty serious uh, line variation. And obviously you can see here, the more, you know, the wider the line, you get nice juicy lines there. So just a really lovely. So there you go. Now, in terms of modern pens, uh, this is probably, to me, the most comparable in terms of flexibility with a Stipula T-Flex nib. Although the T-Flex nib has a, a wider point and the, their feeds are not as well designed as the feed on this pen, so most of the time the ink flow can't keep up on a T-Flex nib. Uh, the feed is a better design and the nib is a better design for the flex. So in terms of flexibility, you're going to get about the same feel from those two nibs, from, from this semi-flex nib and the T-Flex nib. Um, it is significantly softer than a Namiki Falcon, which is a soft nib, not a semi-flex nib or even a flex nib. And uh, not even in the same ballpark as what you're gonna get on like a, a Noodler's steel flex nib. Um, in terms of smoothness, as I mentioned, it, you know, it's a very smooth nib, nice ink flow. It can get pretty wet. I can go very fine lines or put a little more pressure and get some nice wider lines. It's a lovely pen with a great nib um, that I like quite a bit, but just this super narrow width. This this is a good jotting pen for me. You know, jot a quick note. Um, but I find that I make a lot more. I almost said typos, even though I'm not typing. I make a lot more mistakes with this pen than I do with other pens. Now I make a lot of mistakes when I write anyway. My my brain is always about three steps ahead of what my hand is doing. Um, so I make mistakes a lot, but I make even more of them with this pen just because it doesn't, it doesn't sit in my hand exactly the way I like it. That being said, if you're the kind of person who's got a smaller hand, uh, I cannot recommend this pen enough. It's a beautiful pen with a lovely nib, great ink flow, beautiful ebonite material, and it's vintage, and I, I do love vintage pens um, when, when they work well. So that has been my review slash overview of the Waterman, I, Waterman's Ideal 52 and a half V, which is a very small itty bitty pen made out of a lovely material with a great nib. If you have any questions, please head over to penhabit.com. The link to the article accompanying this video is down in the description below. And you can join the conversation there or head over to Facebook and Twitter or, uh, you know, follow, follow me on Pinterest or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for watching. And we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye. Manor, manor, do, 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 do.